Welcome to LARP Academia. Today we're going to talk about how to create spell balls for Amp Guard and other LARPs that don't allow granulated spell balls. Gran granulated spell balls are things like sugar, rice, bird seed. Usually you want to use bird seed for various reasons, but these are for the LARPs that don't allow those types of spell balls. So, for Amp Guard, you have a few ways that you can create spell balls. A common way to create spell balls, and a cheap way, is by using socks. You would take socks, you would roll them up, get a whole bunch of socks until there's enough density that you could put in a piece of cloth and then you would just tie it together. Another way is by getting loose rubber bands. You get a bunch of loose rubber bands, put them together in a, in a piece of cloth, tie it, and then you have a rubber band spell ball. You then also have a gamma ball. You could take it and put it in a spell ball like this, or you could cut it in half and put in gawk or non-solidifying cement. And while this is a very good way to make spell balls, cutting it in half and putting in that non-solidifying cement in order to add some density to it, to add some weight so you could throw a bit further, all those methods aren't as good as the method that I found out. Now the method that I found is through trial and error and it's a little bit of a pain, but it does give the best performing spell balls that I've seen. And what that method is, is you take denim, you cut it into one inch by one inch, approximately, as you can see, they're not very, they're not very even pieces of cloth. And then we'll go through the process here. Now, before we start, I know that we don't usually cover how to create things on this channel and usually we leave the cosmetics and the fashion design to other channels because there are many other channels out there that specialize in it. But here we're trying to teach you how to make the best equipment that you can for the field. And that's what we'll be doing for other LARPs in the future as well. If you are interested in how to throw spell balls properly and how to use them, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell for our future videos that cover those spell casting classes which can use these videos. Now onto the process. As you can see here, I have cut my one inch by one inch denim cloth pieces and I have put them in a strainer. What you need to do now is lightly dampen them. You don't want to make it too damp because it's an actual an absolute pain and you're not trying to make it too painful for you or for anyone else, but you want to lightly dampen these. Now as you can see I've already lightly dampened them but what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make it so that if squeezed they clump a little bit together. Now in order to make it so that they're not completely wet and going to tear through your spell ball cloth we want to bring it to a towel the approximate amount the amount that you could fit uh, about in your hand like that maybe a little bit more but this should be good and then we would try to just slightly dry it. Just a little pad dry, nothing too big. We just don't want it to be soaking wet. Enough that it's able to maintain the density when you grab it, but not enough that it will, that it will break your cloth by making it too wet when you tie it. Now, the, the pieces of cloth that you can use are either A, you can cut it like this, or B, you can go to Walmart or a few other stores and get these cloths. These are 18 by 21 inch. These are about perfect size really. 18 by 21 little cloth pieces that you can find or you can get one piece and then use it as a template for your other bits of cloth. Now that we have our piece of cloth here and we have our dampened one inch by one inch about pieces of denim. We make sure that the denim has a little bit of a form bring it over towards the center of our cloth that was either cut or bought for in the dimensions that we tried to get, 18 by 21. We take corner to corner, bring it, corner to corner. And as you can see, there's a little bit of extra cloth, but what we're trying to do, see that wetness right there? We don't want it to be too wet, otherwise it would break if we tied it everywhere, especially around here. But we're trying to tighten it. So we tighten it, to, to well tell it has a good form, you can squeeze it, it's pretty good. If you get more denim and you compact it like this and you just push it and push it, you can make this actually turn into a rock. In my first attempt to do this, I threw it at a person and they yelled, ow, what is that? Look down and we're very surprised it was a spell ball. So you don't want to do that. Now, 
This, as you can see, I have it some form, but it has some give. You don't want to make it too hard. It will also pass uh, any two and a half inch ring. You try to push a ring through, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, it'll be stuck there. And at this point, we have it twisted to maintain its shape. Next, we need to use a rubber band. When you get a rubber band, it doesn't need to be too big. It can be somewhat small. And then you would bring it over like this. And you would make sure that this is still twisted to maintain its form, or the spell ball's form at least. Keep doing it until the rubber band is tight. And you don't think that you could do another twist, otherwise you might end up breaking the rubber band. So this will be my last one all the way through. Ugh, struggling a little bit. And there we are. You have your little tie. If you want, you can make the tie a little bit further down, but you have your spell ball. Now this is a long tail. So you can cut this or leave it long. There are a few different reasons why you'd want it long. If you have it long right here, it flows in the air and it catches people's eyes and it makes them bring their shield up to block it or well, so that it's easier to dodge. So if I were to throw that at this cat and this cat was paying attention, then this cat would probably be able to dodge it. But if you cut the tail shorter like this, it has to be between two and six inches. This is between two and six inches. Then you are able to throw the spell ball and it will be a lot faster, harder to see, and then it will go towards its target. The tails like this make it so that it won't flap in the air and lose a lot of its force and speed when you throw it. And instead it will be like a little bullet going towards where you want it to go. So this is really good if you're trying to make a spell ball that's meant to snipe somewhere. For example, a phase bolt, a force bolt, anything like that. The longer tail, which has a shorter distance, can be an eye catcher and you can use it as an entangle or an ice ball since generally people will bring their shield up to block something when they see it in the corner of their eyes. It will be a shorter distance that you're able to throw it and it won't be as good of a spell ball. You'll have to also understand that they do have different throws so when you pick it up you have to know right away what the spell ball is which is why it's more of an advanced thing to have a longer tail but I would recommend for you to have all your spell balls be uniform so that you try to get on target when you're throwing first. And the reason why I told you to get such a big piece of cloth is that it's always better to have a bigger piece of cloth that you can cut later to get rid of excess instead of having too small of a piece of cloth. You can have it be a little bit smaller than 18 by 21. I would say maybe 16 by 18. It's kind of pushing it, but yeah, you could you could do it there. You want a longer piece of, of cloth so that when you wrap it, it won't be uh, too small. But that's how you create your amp guard spell ball. And the final thing, so that you don't lose your spell balls, is that you get a permanent marker, you put on the bottom your initials. Mine is a W. So if someone picks up a spell ball and uses this method because it's the best method, you can see that your initials on the bottom, the W, right here. It's a little bit dark because the spell ball is wet and this is a brown colored cloth. If you want, you could actually use a brighter colored marker, it would make sense. But if you take it and you pick it up, you'll be able to see it. Now, one last note for spell balls. When you use entangles, they are hard to find. You can try to get different colors, but it needs to be primarily a brown color. It's the same with any other spell ball. And when these spell balls are wet, they will hit a little bit harder. Right now they're a bit more solid and harder than they'll ever be. So just try to make sure that you don't pack it too hard because of that. If you use rubber bands, then they can melt in the car if the temperature is too hot. So be very cautious about rubber band spell balls and sock spell balls will also gain a lot of weight and potentially a smell if they are wet for too long. These spell balls will dry on their own eventually and will be fine as long as they're not stuck at the bottom of all your amp guard equipment. Again, if you want to hear more about amp guard and other LARPs or want to figure out how to properly throw spell balls in the classes that use spell balls, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be informed in the future.